All right, continuing. So what's interesting is I now have two files for my logo. I have this one where I did the tail and the wing. And then I have this one in my designs. where I've done the head of the tiger. So this is the one I'm currently working on. I double click on it. I can see it. I don't need to have multiple. I don't need to have them in multiple places. I did this so I could show you how you can move vector shapes between vector files. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to say copy, which is just Control or Command C, whether you're on a PC or whether you're on a Mac, right? I'm on a Mac, so it's Command C. So I've copied it. Now I'm going to go to my designs, going to open up my older design, which has the wings and the tail. And then I am going to do Command V to paste it. And sure enough, it brought that path in for me. So this is different than copying and pasting pixels. This copies and pastes the vector anchors and the vector path, which is fantastic. Which means I can make duplicates anytime I want and mess with it. Okay, so I'm just going to tighten this up a little bit. Again, how can I do that? I can move the anchor points around, but I can also double click them to turn them into straights like that or into curves, play with the handles, sorry, on the curves. <laughs> you just have to click them very exactly. And then if I want to modify and not have the, ang the angles of the handles match, I can hold down shift to shorten one and lengthen the other. Or I can even hold down command to get really wonky changes, right? But I want this all to be a little bit more rational. And I'm just going to let everything be a little bit curved. And I'm going for dynamic here. So I'm actually trying to avoid horizontals and verticals. And remember, you can always add a new anchor point whenever you need them. And I kind of like it where my tiger head doesn't have that last little wing to it. And I don't like the triangular eyes, but I'm going to show you how I can modify those once I'm happier with the outside shape. So it's really just kind of messing with your anchor points and your curves until you're happier with it. Okay, stretch this ear out a little bit. <clears throat> Maybe add another anchor point here. Actually, no, I kind of like it straighter. So I can just drop this point, double click to see them all on the inside, and then, yeah, just kind of angle them. See, I don't want this as straight. So I'm trying to figure out how to get what I want from this. So I'm going to click it, see the handles, and then I'm going to hold down Command and just straighten that one out.
Okay. And then if I want to see what it looks like without the sketch, I just turn the eyeball off on the sketch. And then I can do Command minus to zoom out. And now I have this. And it shows me I want it to be a little bit stronger right here. Because remember, your sketch is a starting point. But you're not stuck with anything. So I want this to be a little bit stronger like that. If I want to delete an anchor point, you just click on it and hit delete. If you have too many. And if you want to round one out that's straight, you just use that rounding tool. So it's all about getting the most interesting negative space and positive space. That's all very rational and understood. So now if I hold shift and move these anchor points, you see how they'll line up with each other? But I can move one in closer. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. So I don't get any weird shifts. I'm just going to drop this jaw down a little bit with a new anchor point and then play with that curve. up. To do that I have to play with this curve. There we go. Get it nice and clean. And I'll just round this out a little bit. And then this is the kind of thing that drives me crazy with logo design because it's all meant to be very clean. Like that extra little bump right there, that's just from these curves together. So I, I'm going to use shift and I'm just going to well, maybe command. And I want to even it out there, but I want to bring this one down in line with it. So there's not that extra little bump. And I might even just bring it all the way in. So it just runs straight out from it. You can always do Command Z. So there we go. All right. So I've got the outside of my tiger head and I've cut out these eyes. If I turn my sketch back on, this is how I can alter the cutouts, right? I can just like I did on the outside, I can add anchor points to the eyes. And then I can use these cornering tools to round them in a very controllable and rational way. And then round them here. And then round them at the tear duct, if you want to call it that. Let's see how that looks. And there, this one is too big for sure. So I'm going to bring all of these anchors in a little bit. Shift it. And bring all of these in just a little bit. But remember, this is a whole cut out. These aren't floating white shapes on top of black shapes. These are holes cut out of my black shape. So that's looking a little better. I'm going to corner this a little bit. Yeah. All right, now I'm going to do the other complicated thing. My sketch has a mouth. Right? So I'm just going to turn off the path for the head right now, and I'm going to draw the path for the mouth. And I'm going to do this with that polygonal technique. So I use my pen tool, because the pencil tool is trash in this program, because it plots way too many anchor points. So don't use the pencil for anything. Pen tool. I'm going to plot, move, plot, move, plot, move. 
plot move, plot move, plot move, plot move. I am giving a slight width to the end of the fangs so I can play with it. Plot move, plot move, plot move. Here I'll set a curve plot by plotting and then dragging. And then I'm going to click back on it. Or better yet, hold command down and drag that all the way in so I can go back to a straight. Okay, so now I have that shape. I'm going to go ahead and switch it to be a color. And red is fine, but I'm going to turn off that stroke or that border. That was just helpful for as I traced it. Okay, now I'm going to turn on the path behind it, the black shape. And I'm going to move this path up above, just so it's on top. So now I have kind of a demonic, you know, red mouth. But the thing is, I want to cut that mouth out from the black shape. But I want to make sure I like the shape first. So this is where I might round it a little bit or move the anchor points by double clicking and just positioning the anchors a little bit, maybe rounding it just slightly here. And maybe changing this outside anchor point. Yeah, I liked it before. So that they line up. Okay, now I'm going to round the tips of those fangs with the rounding, the corner tool. I can move this anchor down a little bit, make those fangs more intimidating. So you have all of this control. Okay, now how do I subtract this from this? I'm also going to soften this one. There we go. Yeah, I think I like that. Okay, now, how do I subtract one from the other? I click on it, and I hold down Shift, and I click on the one it's above. So you can see both of those are selected. And now it gives me the options for uniting them, but that would just erase my mouth, or subtracting them. And that's going to subtract the front from the back, like a cookie cutter. So I do that, and it punches that hole out of my shape. So now I have one path, that is the head. And that's the most complicated of my path shapes so far. So now let's use those same kind of techniques that I learned. I'm going to use the pen tool to create this wing. A lot easier than trying to do it with overlapping shape tools. Start with a point, plot the curve, and I went a little too far. So I'm going to start over because I tried to do too much with one curve. So I'm going to go here to here. Come on. Okay, so I'm going to use the pen tool. Zoom in. Do this wing. Click here to here. Do it all like it's polygons, all straights, until... I want to set a curve. And then hold down command, click on it, on the handle, and bring that back, what's called the leading handle. So I can go back to a straight and then drag out for the next curve. 